Russell Smith arrived at an alternative derivation of the periodic table of the elements. Why would anyone other than a scientist care about that? Well, Russell came to it from a completely new direction, from esoteric teachings about the meaning and purpose of human life on Earth. Those teachings, brought to the West by G. I. Gurdjieff, taught of two new laws, the law of three and the law of seven, and a new diagram that joined them together, the Enneagram, appearing on the bottom right. Unfortunately, no one was able to adequately decipher those laws and the diagram in order to make them applicable to scientific facts until Russell Smith came along. By discovering the diatonic enneagram, he was able to uncover the hidden mathematics that joined these laws and the diagram together, and in the process, to prove that these laws had valid physical consequences. He found them expressed in light and music, in the atom, and in transfer RNA, and, most spectacularly, in the periodic table. On the left, below the table, appears the image of a diatonic enneagram as a descending diatonic octave, but without the green lines of supervision, because they are unnecessary for the derivation of the periodic table. The law of three states that in any whole phenomenon, Three equal forces, shown by the larger dots at the vertices of the triangle, are required to produce a result, and always appear at the equidistant vertices of the triangle, Do, La, and Fa. The clockwise descent of the octave is represented by the red circle. Notice that the locations of the notes have changed in relation to Gurdjieff's original symmetrical symbolic enneagram. The notes La and Fa have been shifted to align with the two forces located at the bottom vertices of the triangle, and all of the notes have moved to their diatonic fraction positions. That is, the high Do is at the top, at frequency 1 for simplicity, and the full circle takes us back to the top, to the low do, at frequency of one half, one octave lower. T is one eighth of the way around the circle, at frequency fifteen sixteenths. La is one third of the way around, at frequency five sixths. So is halfway around, at frequency three quarters. Far is two-thirds of the way around, at frequency two-thirds. Mi is three-quarters of the way around, at frequency five-eighths. And Re is seven-eighths of the way around, at frequency nine-sixteenths. Russell explains this in detail in chapters one, two, and five of the Blueprint of Consciousness. The Law of Seven proposes that there are seven steps in the process by which any results are attained, and these steps are the intervals between the seven notes at the diatonic ratios. As a descending octave, this is an illustration of how the patterns and structure of our universe, including the chemical elements, came into existence. Reconfigured as a clockwise ascending octave, the Enneagram becomes a symbol of how processes develop in time and, in fact, can tell us how anything must be accomplished and shows where assisting octaves are needed. What is the periodic table? It was first put together by Dmitry Mendeleev in 1869 in order to organize the knowledge about the similar properties of the many chemical elements that had been discovered. 
The present table organizes the elements from left to right and top to bottom in the sequence of their atomic numbers. That is, by the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom of that element. Then, the elements are grouped into columns with similar chemical characteristics, as determined by the filling of their electron subshells. That is, by the possible locations of the electrons in the space around the nucleus. In the table shown here, the four electron subshell families, S, P, D, and F, are represented by the four differently colored rectangles appearing around each element box. The 19 outer electron subshells of the elements are indicated by the small colored and labeled boxes within the element boxes. The number of electrons in the outer electron subshell of an atom determines most of that element's chemical properties. The table is a fairly complex structure and there was no theoretical underpinning for it until the 1920s with the development of quantum theory which involves some pretty advanced mathematics. Russell derives the table with nothing beyond the simple diatonic fractions. The octave can be drawn in three dimensions using the frequency of each note as the third dimension. To the right of that first descending octave appears an elevation drawing of the 19 spiraling outer octaves in 3D that descend from the original octave with the frequencies of the notes shown vertically to scale. Each octave generates new octaves from the forces that exist at its lars and fars. As we shall see, these octaves will turn out to be exactly the 19 electron subshells of the periodic table. The Enneagram is a symbol of both purpose and possibility. It can restore meaning to our perception of the universe. That it can be used to derive the periodic table provides substantial support for Russell's analysis of the possibilities for individual development inherent in human psychology. By understanding these laws, Russell found an objective process for people to access the higher emotional center. That should be of real interest to each of us. That process requires that we also begin to grasp the fundamental workings of these objective laws, because only then will one have the knowledge and motivation needed for our intellectual center to step aside and allow the three other centers, instinctive, moving, and emotional, to unify and thereby awaken the higher emotional center. If we can see how Russell's outer octaves are created, and produce the periodic table, then we may begin to understand the importance of his discoveries to our own inner growth. Here is the descending diatonic enneagram again, now seen from above as a moving symbol. The line of descent is the red circle going clockwise around from the top dough to a bottom dough at one half of its frequency. The colors of the seven notes of the descending octave correspond to their frequencies. The top dough is ultraviolet and is shown at the top as a large black dot because a force is there. T is a small violet dot. La is a larger blue dot because a force is there. So is a blue green dot. Far is the yellow-green largest dot, because a force is there. Me is an orange dot. Ray is a red dot. And the bottom dough, fully around the circle, is a large infrared dot, black, like the top dough, with a frequency of one half of the top dough. The forces which appear at Do, La and Fa 
are shown as increasingly larger dots, so that when they are superimposed, all three will be visible. In order to show graphically the frequencies of the notes more clearly, we will show two octaves of this original outer octave as a descending spiral in three dimensions, with the notes appearing to scale at elevations corresponding to their frequencies. When we shift from a top view to an elevation view, we can see that the first octave of this spiral descends twice as far as the second. It's important to understand that all of the dimensions of this drawing are only symbolic, not actually spatial. The outer octaves all came into existence at once, as a pattern of laws extending throughout space. They were later actualized as a set of ascending octaves as each new cosmic whole. In this case, the chemical elements came into being. But the outer octaves are illustrated here as coming into being in sequence, according to the frequency of their top toes. A new outer octave begins at each la and fa of an earlier octave, because the forces there are the top toes of new octaves. Although they are shown here as a set of separated descending octaves, we emphasize that they are, in fact, a non-dimensional pattern that appeared instantly in potentia as a set of lawful possibilities as the universe began. See the first few pages of Chapter 6 in the Blueprint of Consciousness. This first octave, later to be named the 1S, is where we begin. Let's watch as the succeeding octaves appear in order, starting with octave number 2, whose top doe is at the la of the first octave. Octave number 3 begins at the la of the second octave. Then, octave number 4 begins at the far of octave number 1. All 19 of the colored outer octaves are generated incrementally from their top does in descending order, with the new does appearing at the previously created las and fars. We will explain the reason for the octave's colors shortly, as they are colored by the family they belong to. As we return to the top-down view, we can see that this cosmic weave consists of many spiraling octaves joined at their lars and fars. A triangular structure of boxes then fades in, and we pause to notice how the 19 circular octaves align with it. Each octave's top dough is indicated by a box with its center located on a triangle's top vertex, and the center of that octave is immediately below that box, centered in the triangle of its forces. Russell chose to label the top dough of the first octave as frequency 1296, and that number appears in magenta at the center of the top box of the triangular structure. The number 1 in the top right corner of the box indicates that this is the first octave with the top dough of the highest frequency. The fractions at the bottom of the box indicate that this first frequency is the highest dough, 1296 times 1, and that 1 is written as 2 thirds to the zero power times five sixths to the zero power. That is, as one times one. We will see how this triangular structure generates each of the 19 outer octaves and how most of them can be reached by multiple paths. See the Blueprint of Consciousness, page 356. Arrows appear, 
showing that the frequency of the new force, which exists at the la of the first octave, will have a frequency of 5 sixths of 1296, or 1080. This new dough at la appears as a box down and to the right of the box of the first octave. The force, which exists at the far of the original dough, in the box down and to the left of the top dough, will have two-thirds of the original dough's frequency, or 864. There is only one way in which each of the top doughs of the octaves in this second row can come into existence, as the la and fa of the first octave. The third row of three new doughs will come into existence from the octaves of the second row. The middle octave, with a top dough of frequency 720, can be reached by two paths, actually as two separate but identical octaves. The first one comes from the top frequency, 1296, by following the two-thirds arrow down and to the left to its far at 864, then the five-sixths arrow down and to its right to the la of that. That is, 1296 times two-thirds equals 864, and 864 times five-sixths equals 720. The second middle octave, with the top dough of 720, is reached by an alternate path, going from the top box of 1296, down and right to its la at 1080. 1296 times 5 sixths equals 1080. Then down and left to the far of that octave. 1080 times 2 thirds equals 720. In the fourth row, the two central frequencies can each be reached in three ways, producing three octaves with that top dough. Frequency 480, for instance, can be reached from the top dough of 1296 by going down and left multiplying by two-thirds, then going down and left again, multiplying by two-thirds again, then down and right, multiplying by five-sixths. Secondly, 480 can be reached from the top dough by going left, right, then left. 1,296 times two-thirds times five-sixths times two-thirds. Or finally, by going right, left, then left. 1,296 times five-sixths times two-thirds times two-thirds. The fractions by which the top dough of octave number one, 1,296, are multiplied to give the new doughs are shown in the bottom row of each octave box as powers of two-thirds or five-sixths. This generation of top dough frequencies by multiple paths constructs a pattern familiar in mathematics called Pascal's Triangle. That is, if one were to list in each box the number of identical octaves having each top dough frequency, each coming via a different path from the first top dough, 1,296, that would give you the pattern of Pascal's triangle. The first row of that pattern would be 1, the singular top octave. The second row, 1, 1, the octaves of 864 and 1,080, which can each be reached by only one path. The third row, 1, 2, 1. Because 576 
and 900 can be reached by only one path. But the middle dough, 720, can be reached by two paths. The fourth row would be 1, 3, 3, 1. Because the doughs of the two central octaves can each be reached by three paths. In general, each dough can be reached by the number of paths, which is the sum of the two numbers just above it, because it can be reached by that many paths from each side. This structure contains in itself the Fibonacci sequence, shown in red, a pattern of numbers created by adding the previous two numbers to get the next number and starting with 1, 1. This sequence is found throughout the natural world. See page 330 in the Blueprint of Consciousness. Entire books are written about this remarkable fact and the frequent appearance of that sequence is presaged here. Due to these multiple paths, each new row of many generated octaves is only one longer than the row above it. We stop showing this pattern after four rows, but it continues, producing further rows in an enlarging triangle. The reason that new entries on the left side after the fourth row are not shown is that their top dose are smaller than the frequency 324, which is the second bottom dough of the primogenitor octave number 1. 324 equals 1296 times 1 half times 1 half. All of the notes of all of the first 19 outer octaves can be found within the one octave range of that original octave from 648 to 324. Now we return to the top of the triangle and look at the sequence in which the outer octaves come into being, ordered by the descending frequencies of their top doughs. Octave number 2 has a top dough of 5 sixths times 1296 equals 1080 and octave number 3 has a top dough of 5 sixths times 1080 equals 900. But octave number 4, the next to lowest frequency, is on the left at 2 thirds times 1296 equals 864. But 864 also equals 24 25 times 900 and this is shown by an arrow rising to the left from octave number 3 at frequency 900. To see this note that you can reach 864 from 900 by going up and to the left twice then down and to the left once. This is the same as multiplying by six fifths twice and by two thirds once. That is, six fifths by six fifths equals thirty six twenty fifths, and two thirds times thirty six twenty fifths equals twenty four twenty fifths. Whenever from the top dough of an octave, one can go up one row and left to a second box, still staying within the Pascal's triangle structure, there will be a new top dough with 24 25ths of the frequency of the starting dough. That will always be the next dough down in the order of frequencies, because it is so close in frequency to the dough you started from. When one can no longer continue to go up one row and left to a second box, staying within Pascal's triangle, then the next dough in the sequence will be at five-sixths of the dough you started with, down 
and to its right, at its la. Since we started with the do of octave number three at 900, octave number four is 24 25ths of that, 864. Upper row and at the second box to the left. Since that is at the left ledge of the triangular structure, octave number five will be to the right and down from octave number three at its la, with a top dough of five sixths of nine hundred, or seven hundred and fifty. After that, we can again go up and to the second box on the left, to twenty-four twenty-fifths times seven hundred and fifty, equals seven hundred and twenty. The dough of octave number six. Then, we must go back to the la of octave number five to create octave number seven. We can then continue up and to the left to create octaves number eight and number nine before returning to the right side of the triangle with octave number ten at the la of octave number seven. Nineteen does can be generated in this way and still have larger frequencies than 324, described as the bottom of the universe. As Russell explains in the book, the single octave range from 648 to 324 is also sufficient to contain many similarities to the already existing, that is, smaller copies of the cosmic weave as fractal images at smaller scales within octave number 16. According to Gurdjieff, the dough at 324 is also where the second particularity of the solar interval ends the octave of the universe. See pages 360 to 361 and 435 to 442 in the Blueprint of Consciousness, to find out about these aspects of the cosmic weave. We have now completed the first third of this presentation, and it may be a good time to take a break. Please pause the video if you wish. When we resume, we will review what we have covered. What have we learned so far? We have looked at the structure of a descending diatonic enneagram with its seven notes at diatonic ratios around a circle and its three forces located at the vertices of its equilateral triangle. We have seen this original octave start at a top dough with vibration 1296, then halve in 3D to 648 and halve again to 324. From this first octave, called the 1S, we saw how 18 more outer octaves originated at successive Lars and Fars within this first two octave range. Then, we looked at the structure of Pascal's triangle, created by multiplying the original top dough of 1296 by either five-sixths or two-thirds several times in succession to create successive lines of the triangle. And we saw that most of the interior octaves of that triangle would be created by multiple paths. Finally, we analyzed the order of the 19 octaves created with top does greater than 324, based on the frequency of their top does, and numbered them sequentially. Now we will create a family tree and determine the four families of these 19 octaves. We now need to understand how these octaves are grouped into the different families which determine their color. Each octave family appears here as two diagonal rows of octaves 
two lines of red octaves, two of green, two of blue, and two of yellow. Although the successive octaves, since they begin with lower top dos, are shown as being shorter and shorter. This new image is Russell's Universal Cosmic Weave Chart from page 349 of the Blueprint of Consciousness. The octaves are now arranged and numbered in the order of the descending frequency of their top dose. This sequence of octaves was the first important fact that Russell discovered about the outer octaves. And it is vital to understanding how the periodic table is derived. But, to understand the grouping of the octaves into families, we must now fill in all of the notes of the last 12 octaves above their top does. On this chart, page 350 of the Blueprint of Consciousness, Russell has calculated all of the octaves notes and their frequencies above each top doe by multiplying each doe by the ascending diatonic fractions until all of the missing notes of each octave are shown. By studying this chart we can see how the different families are assembled. There are shared frequencies between the notes of the first octave or progenitor of each family and the note ray of the subsequent octaves of that family. These are shown with horizontal lines colored by family. You can see that the note ray of any octave always connects back to the progenitor of its family, the family's first member. This chart constitutes a sort of family tree of the outer octaves, connecting every octave back to the number one octave the trunk of the tree. The different families are determined by how many steps are required to connect them back to this number one octave, the trunk. Determining the members of the four families is our first objective. All of the red octaves are designated as the supreme family or S family. They are octaves numbered 1, 2, 4, 6, 9, 12, and 16, and all share frequencies with the primogenitor octave number 1, which is labeled the 1S because it is the first octave of the first family, the S family. The next supreme family members are labeled 2S, 3s, 4s, and so on, up to 7s, in the descending order of the frequency of their top dose. The family labels of each octave appear at the bottom of the chart. The frequencies of notes in the 1s, that are the same frequency as a ray note of a subsequent s octave, are shown as horizontal red lines connecting the rays of the later S octaves back to the 1S. Red boxes appear to highlight these connections. These lines continue as thin black lines to demonstrate that only the red octaves share any notes with the 1S. The second objective in understanding the outer octave families is to see the number of steps it takes to get from each family of octaves back to the primogenitor octave number one, the 1S. All of the supreme family members, the red octaves, share notes with the 1S and so are directly connected to it in a single step. All octaves contain in their first inner octave two oscillating does, a duality of two points of existence. See Chapter 4 in the Blueprint of Consciousness. This 
is expressed in the chemical elements of the supreme family octaves by the fact that each octave in this family contains only two chemical elements. One is the major oscillation and the other is the minor oscillation or point of existence in its duality. Since each element has a unique number of protons which determine the element, there will also be only two electrons in each S subshell, which is the quantum theory name for these outer octaves. The number of electrons in the outer electron subshell will determine most of the chemical properties of that element. The second family of octaves is named the prime or P family in green and contains octaves numbers 3, 5, 8, 11, 15 and 19. The prime family members connect back to the 1S trunk in three steps. The prime family's first octave, octave number 3, is labelled as the 2P octave because it is the progenitor octave for the second family or P family. The next P family octaves are labelled 3P, 4P and so on up to 7P. Each of the rays in the green octaves following the 2P is at the same frequency as a note in the 2P octave. These shared notes or connections are indicated by horizontal green lines and green boxes appear to highlight them, connecting all the members of the prime family back to the first P octave, the 2P. In the second step of connecting back to the 1S, the ray of the number 3 octave, the 2P, connects back to the T of the number 2 octave, the 2S, about a third of the way down the chart, at frequency 506.25, with a thicker green line. It is drawn thicker because it is connecting many octaves in a later family back to a member of an earlier family, closer to the 1S. A single green box appears to highlight this connection. In the third step, to connect the P family back to the 1S. The ray of the 2S connects with a thick red line to the T of the 1S, almost at the top of the chart, at frequency 607.5. A green box appears around this line to show that this is the connection back to the 1S for the entire prime family of octaves. Because there are three steps for the prime family to connect back to the 1S, there are three dualities in the P family, one for each step. Going out from the trunk, the 1S, the first duality is for the connection from the 1S to the 2S at 607.5. The second is for the connection from the 2S to the 2P at 506.25. And the third is the duality that each P octave has in itself as a member of the P family. Since each duality contains two elements, there are six elements in each of the P family octaves or P subshells. The octaves of the blue family the third, or distant family, are octaves numbers 7, 10, 14 and 18. They connect with blue horizontal lines from their ray notes to its first member, the number 7 octave, which is labelled the 3D, as the first member of the third, or D family and the others are labelled 4D, 
5D and 6D. Blue boxes appear to highlight the connections between the members of this family. The 3D's note RE connects the 3D back to the T of octave number 5, the 3P, with a thick blue line. At about a sixth of the way up from the bottom of the chart, at frequency 351.56. A blue box appears to highlight this. The note ray of octave number 5, the 3P, connects with the thick green line to the T of octave number 3, the 2P, about a third of the way up from the bottom, at 421.88 and a blue box highlights it. The 2P, as we have shown, connects back to the 2S at 506.25 and then to the 1S at 607.5 with thick lines. Blue boxes now appear in sequence to highlight these connections of the D family back to the 1S trunk. Note that there are five connections required to connect the blue family to the 1S. Starting from the 1S, there are therefore five dualities, or ten elements, in each octave of the D family. The first, for the connection from the 1S to the 2S. The second, for the 2S to the 2P. The third, for the 2P to the 3P, the 4th for the 3P to the 3D, and the 5th duality is the one for each of the D octaves in itself. Lastly, the F, or final, family consists only of the octaves numbers 13 and 17, in yellow. Octave number 13, the 4F, is the first octave of this fourth family, and a yellow box appears at the ray of octave number 17, the 5F, to highlight its connection back to the T of the 4F at frequency 406.9, about a third of the way up the chart. Then, six more yellow boxes appear, First, around the thick yellow line connecting the ray of octave number 13, the 4F, back to the T of the distant family octave number 10, the 4D, almost halfway down the chart at frequency 488.28. Then, around the thick blue line from the ray of octave number 10, the 4D, to the T of octave number 7, the 3D near the top of the chart, at frequency 585.94. Then, around the thick blue connection, from the 3D's ray, back to the T of the 3P, near the bottom, at 351.56. Then one around the thick green connection, from the 3P to the 2P. At a third of the way up, at 421.88. Then, at the thick green line from the 2P to the 2S at 506.25. And lastly, around the thick red line from the 2S to the 1S trunk at 607.5. There are seven yellow boxes in total, one for each duality in the final or F family, which therefore has 14 elements in each octave. We have now completed the second third of this presentation, and it may again be a good time to take a break. Please pause the video if you wish. When we resume, we will review what we have covered. What have we learned at this point, we have looked at the structure of a descending diatonic enneagram 
with its seven notes and three forces. We have seen this original octave start at a top do with vibration 1296, then halve to 648, and halve again to 324. From this first octave, the 1S, 18 more outer octaves have originated at succeeding Lars and Fars within this two octave range. We looked at the sequence of these octaves based on the frequency of their top dose and numbered them accordingly. Then we added in all of the diatonic notes above those originating dose and grouped them into four families based on the family tree of their connections back to the primogenitor octave, the 1S. We counted the number of steps in those connections to the 1S for each family. One step for the S family, three for the P family, five for the D family, and seven for the F family. Those are the number of dualities in each family, and therefore they each contain twice that number of chemical elements. Now we will examine the natural organization of this sequence of 19 octaves into seven rows and compare that structure with the structure of the periodic table as it is created by the equations of quantum mechanics. They are identical. Then we will actually construct the periodic table from these 19 octaves. We now zoom in for a closer look at this ordered sequence of outer octaves at the bottom line of the outer octaves chart. When Russell first saw this strange progression, it looked a bit familiar. He called his sister, a chemistry teacher, and asked her to send him the order in which an atom's electron shells and subshells filled. It matched. Exactly. Russell then chose the family names so that their first letters would agree with the already established names of the electron subshells in the periodic table, as the electrons fill the energy niches successively further from an atom's nucleus, that is, the S, P, D, and F subshells. With this octave sequence, and the organization of the outer octaves into families based on the number of connections required to connect back to the 1S, the originating octave, he had almost enough information to construct the entire periodic table. We can now go about doing this. Notice that there is a natural division of this sequence of octaves into seven segments, each beginning with the next S octave. These are now highlighted with black boxes. Russell called the first element of each new S octave a new beginning, because by grouping these segments into seven rows, each row will start with the next S octave in sequence. The similar characteristics of the elements in each row will then be aligned vertically, as we shall see, to create the periodic table. That is, a new row of the periodic table will begin with each successive S octave. At the end of each row, Russell refers to the last element that comes before starting a new row with a new S octave as a big ending. The typical characteristic of these last elements is that all of their electron subshells are filled or satisfied, producing a very unreactive element called a noble gas. The very first octave the 1S, because it is followed by another S octave, the 2S, contains both a new beginning and a 
big ending. And therefore, hydrogen, with one proton, begins the first row of the periodic table. And helium, with two protons, and two neutrons to stick them together, ends that first row as the first noble gas. After that, you can see that every row ends with the last element of the P family octave that is in that row, which will also be a noble gas. Having figured out the families and their connections back to the 1s, we return to Pascal's triangle boxes, now containing each of the octave's family names at the upper left corner of each box. See page 356 in the Blueprint of Consciousness. Then, the chart reorganizes itself into the seven rows we just discussed, listing the octaves in sequence, and beginning each new row with a supreme octave, a new beginning, and ending it with a big ending. See pages 365 to 375 in the Blueprint of Consciousness. Now, Russell's creation of the periodic table is almost complete. Fortunately, Russell saw that when he placed the 19 octaves of the universal cosmic weave in successive energy shells and then observed the order of their creation, that order precisely matched the scientific mathematically formulated quantum theory description of how the energy shells and subshells fill with electrons. This chart of the electron shells and subshells from the Blueprint of Consciousness, pages 353 to 355, shows the sequence in which the subshells are filled. Sometime after Russell developed the outer octaves derivation of the periodic table, this popular image of the atom as a nucleus surrounded by concentric shells and subshells of electrons was replaced by that of electron orbitals, which are distinctively shaped clouds of probability around the nucleus, in which the electrons are most likely to be found. That resolved the appearance that the electrons were jumping around during their filling and brought the images we now use to understand the atom into conformance with Russell's sequence of outer octaves and with the quantum equations. The terms electron shells and electron subshells are still used and the subshells exactly match Russell's 19 outer octaves are named the same and fill in the order just described. The number of electron orbitals in each subshell matches Russell's number of dualities in each octave family S, P, D and F. The seven electron shells are the seven beginning numbers of each subshell as shown in Russell's chart. That is called the principal quantum number n of each subshell. Since each orbital, or duality, contains two electrons, one for the major and one for the minor oscillation, there will be two elements in the single duality of the S subshells, six elements in the three dualities of the P subshells, ten elements in the five dualities of the D subshells and 14 elements in the seven dualities of the F subshells. Every time I look at Russell's model, although it is not scientific, I am amazed by its simplicity, as well as by the fact that after observing the order of creation of the 19 outer octaves, the exact same results were produced and were done so without developing any of the complex formulas 
of quantum mathematics. The periodic table is organized to place elements with similar chemical properties into vertical columns. The number of electrons in the outer subshell of an atom, called the valence electrons, determines most of these properties and will therefore determine the element's placement in these columns. Each new row of the periodic table begins with a new S octave and the first element of each S octave is a new beginning. The subshells then fill in according to the outer octave order of creation. The dualities or orbitals of these subshells typically fill in one electron at a time in each successive duality. The major oscillations of each duality receive their electrons first, starting with the duality closest to the 1s, before the other dualities receive their second minor oscillation electrons. Sometimes though, the major oscillations in the outermost subshell of an element will borrow an electron or two from the minor oscillations in the outermost orbitals of the next earlier subshell. Each row of the table ends with a big ending, an unreactive noble gas, because all of the electron subshells of that element are filled. The element just before a noble gas is called a halogen when it's in a P subshell and is very reactive because it needs just one electron to complete its outer subshell. Fluorine, chlorine and bromine are examples. Hydrogen, since it also precedes the noble gas helium, is similarly very reactive. Now we can put together the periodic table row by row. The first row of the table appears now in two boxes for hydrogen and helium. The abbreviation of the element name is at the top. In the next part of the element box labeled PR is the number of protons in its nucleus, the atomic number of the element. Next down in the part of the box labeled FA is the element's octave family name or outer subshell. The final section labeled DU shows the element's orbital or duality. It will be either a major oscillation, the 1A in the case of hydrogen, or a minor oscillation, the 1B for helium. All of the S subshells have only one duality or orbital. Hydrogen and helium were the first elements to form and still constitute most of the ordinary matter in the universe. Single protons, that is, hydrogen nuclei, were created as the superheated so-called quark-gluon plasma of the Big Bang cooled. Then, helium nuclei, the element of the minor oscillation of the 1s, began to be created by nucleosynthesis as two protons fused together with two neutrons to create the helium nucleus. That completed the first row of the periodic table. This creation was an ascending octave, occurring in time, but it followed the pattern already laid down in potentia as physical law by the cosmic weave of the 19 outer octaves. For some time, these were the only two elements in the universe. Next, as the second row of eight elements was created in stars by nuclear fusion, 
not necessarily in this numerical order. This second row appears beneath the first row of hydrogen and helium. The eight elements of the second row fill in, sequenced according to the number of protons in each nucleus. There are two elements from octave 2s and six from octave 2p. First are elements number three and number four. The alkali metal lithium and the alkaline earth metal beryllium, the single duality of the 2s. Then there are the three dualities or six elements of the 2p octave boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon. Elements number 5 through number 10. The first three are labelled as the major oscillations of the three dualities of the P family 1a through 3a followed by the three minor oscillations 1b through 3b. These three dualities are called the three orbitals of the P family in quantum theory and have three similar but distinct electron cloud shapes. As the second row fills in, the box describing helium, the minor element of the 1s octave in the top row, moves to the right six spaces to keep its big ending position over neon, the second noble gas which is the final element and big ending of the 2p octave in this second row of the table. Then, the eight elements of the third row of octaves, the 3s and 3p, fill in below the second row. These are elements number 11 and number 12. The alkali metal sodium and alkaline earth metal magnesium. The duality of the 3s octave and the six elements of the 3p octave, aluminium number 13 through argon number 18, the third noble gas and the last element of the third row. As we start the fourth row with the 4s elements number 19 and number 20, the alkali metal potassium and alkaline earth metal calcium, we again must move the right side of the upper rows, those to the right of the 2s octave, 10 spaces to the right to keep the big endings, that is, the noble gases aligned. This is because the next octave or subshell after the 4s is the 3d with five dualities or 10 elements labelled 1a through 5a and 1b through 5b. This creates the fourth row of 18 elements. Two in the 4s octave plus 10 in the 3d octave plus 6 in the 4p octave for a total of 18. The fourth row ends with the fourth noble gas, element number 36, krypton. This pattern repeats as the fifth row fills in, containing elements starting with element number 37, the alkali metal rubidium, and ending with element number 54, the fifth noble gas, xenon. When the final family octaves first appear in the 6th row, just after the 6s octave, the right upper rows must again shift to the right, this time moving 14 spaces to the right to accommodate the 14 elements of the 7 dualities of the 4f octave. This 6th row then has 32 elements, 2 plus 14 plus 10 plus 6 equals 32. From element number 55, 
the alkali metal cesium, through element number 86, the sixth noble gas, radon. The seventh and last row is similar to the sixth, with 32 elements. From element number 87, the alkali metal francium, through the seventh noble gas, number 118, organicin, first synthesized in 2002. Listing all of the rows, we have 2 plus 8 plus 8 plus 18 plus 18 plus 32 plus 32 equals 118 elements, all that have been discovered. All of those above element number 83, bismuth, have such large nuclei that they are radioactive and unstable. The heavier ones lasting only a fraction of a second. The periodic table is now complete. Russell's creation of the periodic table is a most remarkable achievement. Using nothing but the simple arithmetic of the diatonic octave fractions, he has generated the entire periodic table, which was discovered and organized purely on the basis of experimental evidence long before the creation of quantum theory put it on a solid theoretical basis. In fact, it would seem that the simplicity of the octave structure should give it first priority as part of the axiomatic image of the universe, the diatonic octave and Enneagram, as Russell explains in his book. How is it that two such very different mathematical approaches can come up with the same complex pattern? It is easier to understand this when one realizes that the solutions to the equations that generate the atomic orbitals of quantum theory are discrete three-dimensional standing waves or harmonics of fairly simple sine wave oscillations. And so are the musical notes of the diatonic octave. And again, why does this matter? Because it demonstrates that the law of three and the law of seven are real and underlie the physics and chemistry of the universe. Therefore, the Enneagram, which unites them, is of central importance to our understanding of the meaning of this world. It is above all a diagram of purpose, showing how any intentional aim or ascending octave is to be accomplished. And the diatonic octave provides a map for our possible inner development. A worthy purpose for each of us. Thank you for watching this simplified version of Russell Smith's derivation of the periodic table.